True court. All yeah. right, we're now joined by David Newton, ESPN.com. Covers Carolina. Got to know David back when Matt Rule decided to check the NFL out as a head coach, which he's wanted to always do. And, of course, it did not work out. David, thanks for your time with Craig and Paul, and I'm David Smoke. Um, besides the obvious, besides whatever the record is, 11 and 27, or whatever that number is, what went wrong with Matt Rule in Carolina? A lot of it comes down. He just never could find that franchise quarterback. He tried. I mean, he went with Teddy Bridgewater right off the bat when he moved on from, from Cam Newton. I think they, they moved on too quickly from him. I think he's a guy that had they built around him. He was a guy that could have managed the game well enough to at least keep him in games and one at a level that would have given him more time to, to, to wait for that right guy to come along. Uh, then they went to Sam Darnold, who was nothing but a bust with the New York Jets and he never did anything here in Carolina in his one year there. Then they moved on to try to find Deshaun Watson. They couldn't get him and uh, lost him to the Cleveland Browns and then took the consolation prize at Baker Mayfield. And Baker's headed for, you know, career worst numbers here. And um, it just never got that one piece. I think the defense was making a lot of progress. Last year it played well. It was playing well again this year, well enough to win. But the quarterback was making too many, too many problems. And the offense in general – just wasn't clicking enough to give them a chance to, to win games or at least have a serious chance to win consistently. David, uh, when they hired Ben McAdoo, I thought that was a little concerning just because I didn't know that with the offensive pieces that they had, if he would be the fit to get the most out of Christian McCaffrey and DJ Moore and guys like that. And it just seems like not only was Baker Mayfield playing awful, they weren't really even leaning into his strengths, were they? I agree. I mean, and, and you got to use Christian McCaffrey. I mean, he, he's, he's been healthy for five games. That's the longest stretch he's had in a while. Um, he had two straight 100 yard games and they were moving the ball, but they just didn't stick with it enough. And, um, you know, and, and Baker really never went to Christian enough as a check down receiver. He tried some of his last game a little bit and it was effective, but they, they just didn't do it enough. And, uh, when you got a weapon like that, you got to use it. But, uh, it was just not just that. It was just the fact that the other receivers and, and, and Mayfield just never got on sync. Um, I, I think some of the things that, that McAdoo is doing is, is going to be good. But I think if you look at how Matt had success at Temple and, and Baylor, I mean, he pounded the ball a lot. I know he spread the ball out a lot at, at Baylor, but uh, he ran the ball a lot too. And they just never were able to get in a position to do that consistently here. And, um, you know, it wasn't really good uh, – a complimentary football and the defense is on the field way too much and just a lot of different things going on. So it just, this was a colossal disaster in a lot of ways. So David, why was this timing this week, the, the right time? I mean, I understand that they got, they got bludgeoned and that probably had something to do with it, but, but why now at this moment, was it a time to the best time to move on? Yeah, I got a feeling Sunday night, even though it was an embarrassing loss, and there were a lot of, not a lot, a ton of San Francisco fans in the stands that, David Tepper would be a little patient, but he, he wasn't. And he, I woke up the next morning up from what I hear and just was not very happy and started thinking about it. And uh, I think thinking about the fact that it looked like it was a home game for the 49ers with so many, you know, he called them red butts in the seats. Uh, it just, I, I think that just finally got to him and said he's got to go ahead and make a change and try to turn things around because, you know, Tepper is a, a businessman at heart and he, uh, he doesn't like losing and he also doesn't like losing money. And when the fans turn on you, that's just a bad sign for an organization because uh, it's just hard to get it turned back around then. So uh, yeah, I think it, a lot of it was just, so he's got to try to find a way to win the fans back. And the fans were screaming fire rule at every game. So he gave them what they wanted. David, do you, uh, do you think that there's any chance of trading off some assets for draft picks so that they can focus on moving up and drafting the franchise quarterback? This appears to be a draft that will have a, a few guys that could maybe fit that mold, but, um, you know, and they might have a great draft pick anyway, but you kind of have to guard against the Texans too, uh, going and getting the guy you may want. Yeah, I've heard that a bit about maybe they just go ahead and tank, but, I mean, I think a lot of the pieces are here. To, to build around. I mean, McCaffrey's the one piece I can see them moving on from because he's got the big contract. He's what six years in the league. He's got uh, you know, you know, had a lot of injuries here in the past, so they've really got to monitor his reps and practice a lot. 
So I could see them maybe doing that if they could find a contender that's willing to give up some nice pieces to, you know, young pieces that are draft picks to help them build. But um, I don't, I don't get the sense they want. I mean, it, you know, the, David Tepper was kind of asked that, and he said no. We, he wants to win. He, they don't think this division, you know, at a point right now where anybody's going to run away with it. So they feel like they still, if they can win a few games, they can get back in this race. I, I, I know that's a long shot, but back in, I guess it was 2014, the, the team looked like totally out of it. I think it was three, seven, and one. And Ron Rivera was the head coach and, and he kept telling everybody how the division was a mess and they could still win it. And lo and behold, they went eight, eight, seven or seven, eight and one and won a division and, um, actually won a playoff game. And, you know, you never know what's going to happen. So I think that's going to be the mindset they have here. Steve Wilkes, their interim coach is going to be wanting to win because he would love to have his job full time and he's not going to get that unless. As Matt Rule said, he, he's exceptional, and the only way you can be exceptional is to win games. So, yeah, I, I, I can see him let, letting the one player go like McCaffrey, but just not a wholesale change, just to, just to tank. Obviously, the owner was done, and the fans were done. Did he ever, or was there ever a sign, David, he had lost his team? I never got the sense of that. I, I talked to players after the game on Sunday night, one after the other, said they were 100% behind Matt Rule. Phil Snow, uh, as you and I traded a text or two, it's part of the shrapnel of coaching changes. It's a it's a bloody business when things like this happen. Did you ever have a chance to visit with him and, and your thoughts about him not being there? Because obviously the interim coach is also a defensive coach. Yeah, I think that's what hurt. I mean, Matt and his relationship with Matt Rule. I mean, he, he, he's been with Matt since, what, the Temple days. So they have a long-term relationship. Uh, he has his way of doing things. It's a little different than um, what Steve Wills wants to do. Steve was a defensive coordinator here um, in 2018, I believe, and or 17. And um, yeah, I think he he just felt like that he had to make a move there to take control of that unit. He's putting Al Holcomb in charge, so he wanted more control of that. He wants to tweak some things, and do, he'll do things a little bit differently. And um, yeah, I think Phil just kind of caught up in the uh, caught up in everything, and that probably unfortunate because the defense was the one right spot on this team so david uh, i guess for for panthers fans just kind of see how the rest of this plays out there's a lot of season left but of course carousel stuff comes with that is steve wilkes uh, you know a good in-house candidate and where else kind of makes sense as far as the the rumor mill goes with a, a carousel starting up yeah i mean he i think he's a good candidate but, i mean he was the head coach of arizona but they didn't really give him a chance because they hired him after one season and hired cliff King, King, kingsbury but uh, yeah, obviously Sean Payton's a guy everybody's going to talk about. Mm-hmm. The problem there is, you know, New Orleans still has the right to him for a couple more years, but they really want to, you know, let him go to another team inside the NFC South. And also, what would they want? Would they want one, at least, I guess, one first round pick, maybe two? And do the Panthers mortgage their future to get the head coach? I know teams have done that in the past and it's worked out. But uh, I, I just think that would be really a tough sell if they wanted to go that far. So, um, you know, if it's all about money, David Tepper's got the money to, to, to pay for a coach like that. But uh, it's all the other things you'd have to give up to, to get him. And then, again, New Orleans would have a say at that, too. So, And there's also other teams, you know, if Dallas were to fall apart, you know, there's an option there. And there's other teams that will be looking, too. So, anyway, there's a lot of, a lot of there. So, I think they'll really uh, – do a pretty wide search, and, uh, and I think Wilkes will be one of the guys they consider. David, one more thing from me on Matt Rule. He obviously did great. At, uh, he did a great job at Temple. Did a, a, a remarkable job at Baylor, considering the timing and what he did. Um, does this, in your opinion, close out any chances he could still be hired in the NFL as a head coach going forward, or do you feel like he might jump right back into college football? You know. He, <laughs> If I were him, I'd have to take some time off. He took out forty million dollars, <laughs> so, right? So, uh, yeah, yeah, he does. I take Go a, to a beach. I take or a lot of time off, but he loves football. Yep. Um, I think he'd be happy coaching a high school team if he had to. Uh, so I see him getting back into football at some point. Um, it just depends on how much of the forty million he wants to collect here. So, I, yeah, I mean, you, you see, Wilson's a good example. He's a guy that was a head coach at Arizona. He went back to the college ranks. Uh, 
I know he was at Cleveland for a year or two as a defensive coordinator, but then he went back in the college ranks at, at Missouri, and then he came back into the NFL, and now he's getting another shot at least as an interim coach. So you, it can be done, and, and Matt really likes the pro game. Um, so that, that's a factor, too, and he would like to stay in it. It was kind of his dream to be here and, and succeed here. So um, I, I, I think if he gets the right opportunity, he would. you got Ben McAdoo that was on his staff that was the, the head coach of the Giants, and then you know he, he kind of worked his way back to an offensive coordinator here after a few years uh, doing, you know, going – taking a, a step backwards with other positions and other teams. So, yeah, you can do it. Um, he loves coaching that much, and I, I can see that being a factor. And then I can also see him taking a college job. But um, they're just it has to be the right situation for him. Thank you, David. It was great talking to you back when all that started swirling. It happened quickly. We remember the visit with life, Tepper. Life comes at you fast. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I did reach out to Matt, and obviously I know you – uh, have now to look forward to whatever happens from this point forward. We always appreciated your insight in helping us when that story started and now when it ended on Monday of this week. Yep, it happened fast and ended fast. <laughs> yes, it did. Thank you very much. That's David Newton. I also saw a quote David put up on his Twitter feed yesterday about Tepper gave Matt Rule a seven-year guaranteed contract. For what yep. was it, like $62 million or 